Okay. And yeah. Hi. Oh, it looks like we're back to the rainy weather right now. So, um, anyway, I have this, so we'll, we'll kind of start a little bit with this, okay? And uh, you have a vertical, you have a horizontal. Okay? Likewise, you can rotate it. See, this is actually, it's kind of interesting because, you know, this is a, a walking stick I bought at a shrine, okay? But this kind of is a spear point. This is a non-sharp spear point. So, yin, yang, yang, yin, water, fire, fire, water, it has polarity, okay? And that polarity exists here. Vertical, horizontal, or horizontal, vertical. On the other hand, this is the different vertical because you've got the, the point up. This is the different horizontal. Okay. So you have, let's say, your basic ground level, and you have your dimensional hierarchical level. Okay. And you can reverse it. And it creates, uh, to some degree, a different polarity. Framework, okay, okay. Uh, Cliff, anything you want to add on that? Because we're going to start moving, try to get it a little bit in motion. Anything? Uh, not at this time. No. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you're a writer, an idea or concept flashes through you. You sit down put it on paper or, you know, these days you've, you've got a tablet or a, a desktop, right? That's kind of the layout here, okay? And what, what happens? You're, you're working, all of a sudden an idea flashes through. Or conversely, the idea comes first and then the work, okay? And right here, you know, it runs this way as well. Okay. Some people, their strength is they put, they, they work, you know. And then because they're available, they work, something flashes through. And conversely, sometimes some people, you know, are led by the idea concept, and then they'll put the work through. If you, if you have something, if it's just like, this is where most of us are, you know, it's kind of dormant. <laughs> okay. Or, Dormant. Okay, so we're talking about vertical, horizontal, horizontal, vertical, active, passive, yin, yang, yang, yin. Okay, so you know, the staff, if you kind of look at it that way, is, uh, I don't know, interesting. In fact, some people don't, don't really have it consciously, they just move, okay? So there's that. But there's also, for example, like the, let's just say you have the library. You have a laboratory, and then you have, for one of the better term, a gymnasium, okay? Library, okay? I'm very limited, all of a sudden there's a library, okay? I can access a whole variety of different things, knowledge, books, whatever. And then, you know, okay, it just stays up here. On the other hand, there's a laboratory. I can kind of make connections. And in a certain way, even though let's say it's a, a bunch of different volumes, they kind of network to some degree. Knowledge is knowledge, okay? And then if I so, desire. There's a, you know, I choose an activity, you know, or in other words, I'm just not learning about it or kind of researching it a bit more, but also 
uh, kind of trying to train with a sense of embodying it. Okay, so, you know, the library, the laboratory, the gymnasium. Okay, and you can go either direction. It's kind of like, you know, okay, you got this, but you also have that. You have this, you also have that. So you know, really, this, I like working with that because if you sort of get a stick, then all of a sudden, you're, oh, no, no. you're kind of in a de facto gymnasium with, with no access to the library or the laboratory. And if you just stay with the library, there's a lot of very interesting information. And you want to do something with that information. So you pick a topic or two. You investigate it. There's a laboratory, some research, but also it's not just the idea. And then if so noted and you want to go one step further, you there's an activity, laboratory. I have a great idea, but it just stays there. The idea promotes some research, some movement. The research is movement. I can't just read it, think about it. Some involvement on that level, the laboratory. And the gymnasium is like, okay, uh -huh. I have a great idea. I research it pretty well, then all of a sudden there's an activity to actualize it. One, two, three. Okay? So the dojo is it's really all three. Ostensibly, you think the dojo is kind of the gymnasium, but it's the dojo, it's not really the gym. Okay? So let's take this. Okay. And how do we start? We have the time to start with a form, okay? You're gonna take a course in advanced mathematics, okay, right? It's a lot of information. You can't just know the information, you have to be able to kind of move and operate within it. And then, all of a sudden, if you really like that stuff, maybe you become a theoretical physicist. That's gonna be your gymnasium, <laughs> okay? You're not just gonna stay here or play around here. You're going to root in it, ground in it, breathe it. Okay, so one, two, three. So it starts with a form. So you know, just we have a 30 movement set with the number one. Movement number two is a rightward up spiral movement three, downward left spiral movement number four, boom. Coming together at the up, down, heaven, earth, whatever, mind, body, whatever you want to call it. Movement number five, we get into a ready position. Movement number six is a thrusting motion. Seven is the up, down, eight is a repeat of six. Now, nine, we're going to change hands and size. That's a cutting, striking motion. That's a cutting, striking. That's nine and ten. Fingers face each other, thumbs at me, and you turn. Thrust up and down, another change, boom, back, front, change again the hands, step turn, cut strike, back, forward, rotate the hips, step back, step in, sweep, and change, and here, forward, back, back, turn, rotate, catch. Sweep, turn up, rotate the hips, and you have a set. Okay, 30 movements. Okay. So, ostensibly, it's, it's interesting. We, we kind of tend to go into the library. I know the movements. And I can kind of do them. So, I'm just in the library. Gymnasium. All right, you know, kind of know something about it. Yeah, I can kind of do the movements. Um, for me, classical mind body split. It's either physical or it's the idea. Okay. Anything uh, you care to add to that? I mean, that's, that's 
That's all of us, really, myself included. Okay. Anything? Uh, yeah. Um, my first I, I, keto sensei in Chicago, uh, Don Levine sensei, yeah. was really into, because he had been raised in the Western intellectual tradition and he was a sociology professor. Yeah. And he really emphasized mind body unity as a key characteristic of Aikido and that the and and that the dichotomy that you've just described with the first two out of three things you're talking about in your metaphor um, is uh, a Western construct that isn't necessarily reflecting reality. And so a, a lot of his goals seemed to be, at least with us beginners, was to um, try and, and get us to unlearn that mindset and to try and see the potential for mind-body unity. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, okay. So, you know, that's one of the, the things, for example, you know, you get uh, a lot of other sports, a lot, lot, lot of things, especially martial arts these days, so oftentimes because of the MMA, which is fine if that's what you like. You know, it's kind of very, very physical. Of course, there's a lot of skill involved in that. So, you know, you know, I mean, there, there's an area right there. But if, if, for example, the idea of it kind of turns you off, it's like I want something a little different, then you know, maybe you looking for mind-body unity. And one of the words that's big these days is mindfulness. Okay, what is mindfulness? It's being conscious. What is being conscious? Well, to some degree. You have a design kind of in the library. You're, you're, you're study. Okay. And maybe you're involved. In, you, know, you like what's here. So you begin to research it. Okay. And then at some point, you know, somebody reads up, you know, just kind of discuss it with the violence and the way the world's going. So they discover Aikido. Okay. Aikido, they, they read the philosophy of it, then they start to research it. You know, they, they read more books, they maybe go on YouTube and look at the videos, you know, how that works. A little different. That's pretty close, but research might be, well, okay, now, da 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 And then, if they so want to do it, then they might enroll at a dojo, it's called that's the, you know, dojo's not a gymnasium, but there's quite a difference between, you know, just the surface part of the idea, the study, and the research. Now, those since they used to call it, what did he call it? Um, idea versus energy. Okay, in other words, Somebody gets the idea. I want to do something. They start to study, research it a bit. And then there's the involvement in it, the gymnasium. So it's really not a gymnasium right there, but you know, that's about as good a word as it's going to come up with. Okay. One, two, three. Sure, and it you know, yeah. uh, evokes the classical world, right? Ancient Greece, the word gymnasium, yes. right? And so it has it has deeper layers than we normally think about it in contemporary yeah. American society. Yeah, and you know that that what we offer to some degree is, you know, I, I'm not going to call it mindfulness. That's a pretty good cultural label for it, but it's conscious movement. Okay, somebody else. Let's just see. Who chimed in or who chimed out? So, oh, Yaro. Okay, good. Hi. Hi. Okay, so we're kind of going through a one, two, three library idea, laboratory, somewhat more of a, a conscious study involvement, gymnasium. Okay. So we're kind of going through that. And so let's go back over our 30 movements. In fact, let's right now, because I'm doing it for San Jose State. The first 10. Movement number one, 
right hand. I start here. Okay. Movement number two starts with left hand. Going here, I go rightward, back. It's an upward counterclockwise spiral. Now, movement number three is a leftward down spiral. And then up on the toes, movement number four, boom. It's like the up and the down. Boom. We sort of bring in some kind of unity here. So we talk about mind, body, unity, if you will. Movement number five, left hand, right hand, that foot. Movement number six, boom. Thrust, movement number seven is up and down. Movement number eight, repeat six, is thrust. Right hand, left hand, cover the head, change feet. That's nine. Now cover the head, change feet back, the left forward, and then step. Okay, so that's your first 10. Okay. Now, okay, I can just learn that again. It's PE class, okay? I used to play soccer when, when that was what was going on in, in high school, okay? And uh, I didn't particularly care for it, kind of trip over the ball, you know, that sort of thing, right? And never really got involved in, you know, for me, it actually would have been a better a better you know thing to do you know would have been better size wise than basketball okay but yeah I never went past okay I'm doing this in PE okay it's okay right what I really liked about PE was everybody else hated it was it was the laps and then you get to take a shower and you go the laps and then go through the overhanging bars and then. but I like that okay because you know it's a point where okay I get to air out all that energy and run the track and then go through the bars and then I'm the first one into the shower because nobody else really cared. Okay, but I like that. But the soccer, not so much. All right, I can appreciate it if I watch it, you know, like, yeah, that was a great play, you know. But I, I, I to this day, I don't really go from the idea of soccer to the actual research of it and definitely not to the gymnasium of it. Okay, so let's go again. Move it number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cover your head and your face. Okay, and that's both up and down. Hip. Okay, this covers your heart. And your body is kind of got a semi slant to it. Close door, fully open door, difficult for me to keep my balance. So it's kind of like it's almost full open. All right, then we thrust off of that. Okay. Again, cover, down, thrust. Okay, and up, we're going to trade sides. Okay, left is leading, now the right goes up, the left goes down. Right goes forward. Okay. Now right here, for example, I go this way. If we're facing weapons, my head is exposed and face. Okay, so, so really I, I rotate the body into what I call that, you know, semi-closed door to almost fully closed door without turning the yeah. so, and trade sides, go back to the left, but the hands are crossed here. That's movements one through ten. Okay. So we learned the sequence. And uh, what would be, for example, the uh, going more into the library? Okay, now this motion right here. We, we say it starts with one, but it starts earlier than that. And what is that first step? Okay, right here, haven't done a form yet, but I'm here. Call it beingness or consciousness. But beingness, 
coming into being. Consciousness becoming conscious. Letting it. So there was a, a no count. The fact is we just are. Okay, now, okay, make an idea. Maybe I want to learn this. Okay, so it starts with an idea. Right? Now, upward, rightward, spiral. So if this is consciousness, become beginning, becoming conscious. That consciousness is going to have a mind or an idea or a concept. And it involves kind of a feel body sense. And then there's that sense of, you know, the beginnings of mind body unity. And then, right from here, stepping left sided. And right here, we're switching sides and hands, right, left, cover the face, right triangle. See, so if I go like this, da. that's a, it's a little bit of diagonal, but I don't want to go too quick this way. This is about head level. Now I'm going to cover the head and the face again. Switch back to the left with the hands across. And that's movements one through 10. Okay. Done. Now, let's just say the changes. Now we're going this way. I'm going mind, body, body, mind. Okay. Most everything starts with a thought idea. I have a great idea, but I just throw it off. Somebody else takes that same great idea, runs with it, researches it, starts an activity around it. Okay, so we kind of have our library, laboratory, gymnasium. Okay, uh, throwing it out there, this first 10 movements, any, any thoughts on your part? No, nope. not necessary by the way, but. Uh, not at this time, so say. Okay. Now, let's, so what we're doing right now, even though we're moving, it's kind of more like what I would call the library, laboratory, and the potential. I might get involved in the activity of it because I've thought about it. thoughts or the thoughts lead, you know, the actual, I'm just going to think about it, I'm going to research it a bit. That's the laboratory. Involves some body feel. And this was called the gymnasium. And there, you know, the, in some sense, what it is, though. The first two are kind of like mind, mind beginning to touch body. Now, the gym is tricky. And some people start there, like in PE class. I was thrown into a day where we were going to do soccer. I didn't choose to do it. Obviously, I choose, chose to attend that day in high school where all of a sudden there was soccer. Okay. <laughs> so I'm sure it caught up in the thing. But was it my idea to do soccer? Did it motivate me to study it? And I definitely, you know, when soccer was over in PE, I never touched it again, even though, you know, it, it could be potentially fun. Okay. But certain other things, and then there's that. 
Now, if you just stay in the gymnasium with, you know, without going year and year, then, then you still have a mind-body split. I want to choose a job where I got to do is just pound something for, 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 for 10 hours a day. Then I'm going to go home and drink beer and watch TV. You know, it's way where, you know, it's like, okay, this is physical. There's that way. Okay. So anything? Oof. I don't know there's something going on out there, so I can't stop the, the horn from going beep, beep, but okay. Now, what I'm just doing, for example, is I'm doing other types of movement, which, which uh, to some degree, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so what is that? Well, there's that motion, that motion, that motion, that motion, that motion, that motion, that motion. That motion. How does that relate to movements one through ten? Well, for example, if we go movement nine in, we're getting the beginnings of a right left, okay? Or if you're going this one, you go this way and turn, and then all of a sudden you do that motion. And you can turn and do that motion, and that motion. So you're beginning, there's a, a level right there where I'm getting involved because to some degree, I'm, I'm not just staying with the idea and the research. The research is somewhat experiential. And I don't consider that the gymnasium yet. But I'm involved enough with it that I have the potential of not staying with this and this. Maybe something there will open up and maybe it's not, I'm a jock, okay? Oh. And kind of just where I'm standing right here. We need to feel the body. For example, if you're just purely a jock, you probably, you're, you're sort of in the body, but maybe your, your upper centers are too limited, okay? But, for example, we get movement nine and 10. Now we can turn, we got movement nine, we got movement 10. Now we can go to movement seven, nine, and, and all we're doing is expanding out. So we're taking our kind of basic linear sequence and the beginnings of non-linearizing. Okay. For example, I'll go this way. I can turn and go this way on the other side. I can go this way, I can turn. Okay. And then I move this way, this way. Then I repeat that pattern this way and this way. Okay. So I'm, I'm kind of researching the idea. The form is an idea for most people, and they, you know, they sort of you know, get it in the research area. But as I'm getting involved in it, boom. Just those moves from the first ten. Now what I'm adding is turning the hip, stepping, boom, turning the hip, stepping, right, turning the hip, stepping, turning the hip, stepping, boom, boom. Okay, so I'd just like you to uh, see what you're doing right there is it's not the gymnasium yet. The gymnasium is a bad word for it, but you're researching and the beginnings of a feel sense is there. In other words, the idea 
is attractive enough that you start to research it in motion, feeling a bit. Okay, so go a little bit with those opening moves. Okay, uh, anything you want to add on that one? So in other words, you're given a basic form, okay? You're gonna, you go to your algebra class in high school, what's the basic form? What's called algebra? Yeah. Okay, math, mm. or math, yeah, okay? Anything right there? So uh, I went from the first 10 moves and started pivoting yeah. and doing the showman strikes. And uh, I wound up going like all eight directions. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Which, and that oh, was, that was yeah. like a, a kata I learned. I know we're not supposed to have katas, but it was like a kata I learned in Aikido early on with the boken, where you go all yeah. eight directions. Yeah, eight directions, yeah. 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 Yeah, in other words, you know, uh, good. Um, but, you know, sometimes you kind of watch O-sensei, you know, with the stick, and it's very different than you watch the students, and, you know. But one of the, the real eye-opening things for me, uh, what we were taught in Shingu was something called, at the time, it was called Bojitsu, so we used a longer staff than the Cho, okay? And the first set was called Ikkyo. And later, Hikizuchi Sensei decided, okay, I'm going to change it. And he called it Masaka Agatsu Bojitsu and started charging money for certifications. But when I learned it, it was Bojitsu no Ikkyo. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then he did Nikkyo and Sankyo, and there were very different sets. And he paid money to get certified. <laughs> All right, when I learned it, he didn't charge any money. He called it something different. And, you know, there were changes involved. But one thing that was a real eye-opener once was uh, a Tojima sensei. I was watching him after class. He was just going through Bojitsu, the Ikkyo form. And he did the exact form, but he started spinning and doing it to, let's call it, the eight directions. You can start with a four, front, back, right, left. Then it goes four plus the corners, eight directions. But really what happens is that, you know, you know, it goes 16, 32, 64, whatever it is. Okay, so you can keep on going and going. Some point you say it's kind of infinite. Okay. And when he really got into it, he was just moving, moving, moving there. I looked at that, he was doing the exact Ikkyo sequence. And, you know, the 30 movements is probably between 40 and 60%. The, because I'm influenced by that, the Ikkyo form. Now, I've added a bunch of stuff, okay? And so, you know, what happens is after the first 10, it, it branches out quite a bit because we do the fire water changes, okay? Which, um, didn't, you know, exist there, but somehow when he was doing that, I watched it and I said, oh my God, that's like a sensei with the staff. He was doing a very basic set. All he was doing was turning and let's just say, I don't know if it's eight directions, 16 directions, 32 directions, or 128 directions, whatever you want to call it that way. He just, all of a sudden it was like, you know, time kind of slowed down and I said, you know, those are basic archetypal movements. Um, and so that was kind of an eye opener. So, you know, you can take, let's just say, you know, you're, 
you're taking the basic thrust form. And you're, you know, you're going thrust up, down, rethrust. But you're thrusting up, down, and rethrusting. Thrusting up, down, rethrusting. Thrusting up, down, rethrusting. Now I just added a move. I don't move. I don't move. I don't move. I don't move. Okay. Oh, he didn't do that. But some of the spinning stuff, I remember one time he was going this way, and you know, he's he's getting floating with drop, and he'd laugh and pick it up. You know, and you know, you you make mistakes. But I was thinking, yeah, that's that's cool. Because he knew a basic set, but he wasn't afraid of the actual research. And he had a good deep ground in the gymnasium. He was there. I could tell, you know, he was, you know, he was motivated. I, I don't know whether he on his private time would go into it. He had a family, he had a job, he had a lot of demands on his time. He came to the dojo. That was a really special time for him. Okay. So, you know, that wants you to do a little bit, just just, you know, now we go this way. You can sweep and go that way, that way, that way, that way, that way. Okay. Okay. So, you know, these are they call humble beginnings, but, you know, they can get you started. That's how I got started, pretty much, you know, uh, just researching. Translating that research into movement, the beginnings of the gymnasium. If you don't like gymnasium, it sounds kind of like a, but you know, there's an involvement. The gymnasium without the library and the laboratory, you're a jog. If you stay up here, and with the beginnings of a little bit of that, you know, you're teaching something, but you're kind of in what in those sense it calls the awareness. And if all you do is kind of just, you're in the gymnasium, gymnasium doing a limited set, getting better at a very limited set, you're kind of a jock. So the study dimension, the research dimension, the dojo or gymnasium dimension. They're all dimensions. The ideal thing, for example, is that they superimpose See, if you have a lot of this and some of that and very little of that, what happens is you, you, you stay theoretical and you tend to kind of drift, okay? Okay. Um, so we're, we're keeping it right now a little more basic okay but you know it gives you maybe some tools if you wish to transition from just the pure idea which is form with some of the gymnasium but there's the research dimension okay for example what is the whole thing yeah, if Einstein had been limited, he would have tried to understand or be satisfied with Newton's description, Newton's physical laws of the physical universe. He would have said, yeah, okay, now I'm going to research more and more. As he did that, he began to realize that, that Newton didn't explain certain things, like, you know, when, when you talk about light years and an expansive universe, he, he noticed that certain things, uh, space and time were variable. They weren't, new, they weren't in stone like Newton had them. Newton applies locally or globally. When you start to stretch out to the stars and the galaxies, it doesn't apply anymore. 
Good. So he had to had some ideas, did some research. Now, in his case, you know, he's at his desk writing equations, thought experiments. That was his gymnasium. It's a it's more of a mental one, but all right. Not everybody is going to do a movement art. I don't know how Einstein would do it with uh, Aikido per se, right? But he had his own sort of gymnasium. It was, you know, a desk, a blackboard, a notebook. Okay. And he got all the stuff there. And then all of a sudden, he made predictions. And then, you know, some scientists went all the way to, I think, somewhere in Africa to test his theories out. They did the legwork. They found out he was correct about, you know, space time, gravity gravity bending light. And, and you know, all these things he said were gonna happen because of the way that he did this, he researched this, and he put the time in. Huh? That's Einstein. Most of us, you know, we, we have a, our lives are structured differently, so maybe that's not realistic for us. Anything on that before we uh, I can move on with it? Uh, not at this time, Sensei. Okay, yeah. So, you know, one of the things that I kind of want to add, you know, is that, for example, now we go from movement number 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Okay, now we start to add everything we've done so far is the thumb space away from it. That's the first change, all right? But when you start to go here, your second change, thumb space, each other, mm -hmm. thumb space, you, third change, fourth change, so I call the gravity effect. And then it goes back to second change, we have front, back. Okay, and we're actually, that's the time. Right. So we had, you know, where other changes, first, second, third. And then when you start to do that, things start to change a bit. And you can start to go into the different directions. All right. So you know, you can go here, 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 but then all of a sudden, you, know, you go here. Okay, I'm about to do more advanced, so I'm gonna you, know, you go here, here, here. What did I do? I just went from first change, to the second change, to the third change, second change, turn, 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 first change, turn, 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 okay, so it kind of starts that way. Now, if you can't, I mean, you can be all over the place trying to do those changes, which means you're, you're kind of stretching out into or staying in the library and you're not fully in the laboratory, okay? But that's a stage of development. So second change, second set of 10, we start to do the other changes. First set of 10. Second set has the second change, thumb space. Third change, and it's the beginning to what I call, this is the pains in the first change position. Okay. Okay, now, there's a difference between weight and gravity. For example, here, you know, when you're this way, I'm putting my weight into that. What did Einstein find? Gravity had nothing to do with weight. Weight is just mass in a gravitational field. But you, let's say you take a blanket and you kind of sustain it from the four corners. And you throw a weighted sphere into it. It sinks. But there's motion. <clears throat> and then, you know, if you're not adding anything, 
it'll kind of go here and settle it. So the blanket is what he called space-time. The mass of the ball, the heavier the ball, the more it's going to sink. Now, mass and weight are different. Weight varies according to the gravitational field. Mass is constant. A very taut, strong blanket is very little. More weight. And then it'll spiral over here. Okay. There's the sun. There are there's space time all around it. There are the planets. Okay. So here's it. Yeah. So the fourth change we're kind of beginning to work the beginnings of the curvature of space time. We're not going to weigh more. I'm going to put my weight out there. Boom. Okay. So if you kind of go through, for example, the And so we go, second change, third change, fourth change is the space-time curvature one. Now, I'm gonna put more weight there, boom. That's second change, for then that, okay. So when you start to add those things, for example, you have first change, First change. Now you go here, but you then, you, it's really difficult to go from first change to third change. Okay? So you add a second change, then all of a sudden get the, the third change. Once you're the third change, you can add thrusting movements and turning motions, or you can go back to the second change, or you can go back to the first change. And I just added something, which is in the third set of things. Okay? So, uh, research is a lot of it is respectfully messing around. I mean, Einstein, I don't think, said Newton was a fool. <laughs> yeah, I think he probably respected the people who came before him. But it's almost like, okay, here I'm in my patent office because I'm brilliant, but I didn't care about going to class. So here I am. I got a lot of time to work on what he calls relativity. Okay. And he, because he was open enough, in other words, okay, started with an idea. What is gravity? Well, certain things about light seem to be affected, and there, there's light has no weight, as we perceive it. But all of a sudden, light is being curved between this and that, so it says, oh, what, what, what is that? Is that gravity, too? So he just let it go. And he came up with relativity, special in general, okay? okay. Now, right there, for example, I just did a third change, and I did what we call a number seven movement, with the third change. You can do that with the second change or the first change. Second change, third change. As you do that, you can come in and go back, boom, pull back. This way I just added up, you know. Boom, 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 boom. Now I added something from the third set of things. Okay? Okay, so, as I said, be Einstein for a second, okay? okay? Just the outer practice of the 30 movements, you're in Newton's universe. As you start to go into more the research laboratory, you're, you're kind of traveling from the Newtonian, okay, into the beginnings of more the Einsteinian. Okay.
Okay. Anything? We added from the second set. We added the hand changes, second, third, fourth. Uh, yeah, I did some uh, experimenting with doing third position, the, the uh, Sankyo position. Yeah. Um, and fire water changes. Because but although. Then, I will say this, that's really healthy. And we're going to go into the fire water changes. So I want you to hold on fire water just for a second, okay? Okay. Okay. But anything else, just about in general? Um, okay. It's yeah. The one of the one of the advantages of spending like two, three years working on these thirty movements. Yeah. Uh, in terms of my improvisational. Uh, yeah. You know, work is that I can do those hand changes unconsciously. Just I need the I need the thing here so the hands move. You know. Yeah. Without having to be, I'm going to move my hands now. You know. Yeah, I took a, a trumpet lesson or two from a guy who I really like to listen to. And, and so what happens is we started getting into certain things like, okay, what you're going to do is you're in this key. And you're going to, all your notes are going to be within the structure. It turned me off. Okay. And so what happens is, you know, exactly what I do when I try to do that, you know, the, the music, improvise, whatever, you know, is, is uh, I posted this one thing on uh, YouTube and uh, Art Frank was a really good friend of Chet Baker. And Art said, you know, now you're doing what Chet did. You know, I, I think the song was Cherokee. He said, swing it which is, of course, a compliment from a, you know, a really fantastic jazz player. And he said, Chet didn't follow the chords. What he did do was he moved through them and around them. Now, there were certain notes. He was in that range. He would play things that blended with that. And then, the, you know, the, the next progression comes out of that. And he would blend with that. And I, that was high praise. Right, he hasn't, he hasn't praised anything recently I've done, so. <laughs> but anyway, that area right there was really interesting to me. Because, you know, I go, okay, when I'm playing, I sort of pause and then I sort of know the note for the next phrasing, but it usually goes through a, a silence. And that triggers, and then I check, at the end of the phrase, is that compatible? You know, we have your, you know, your uh, da, 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 your intervals and everything like that. I have no method at all. And what was interesting was the guy who was teaching me said, you know, I started out that way, but then I wanted to, you know, not rely on that. So, and with me, it was kind of like, no, I don't want to go there. I really don't. Okay, I understand why you did that. And, you know, it was a point where I was going to say, well, I want you to understand why I don't want to go where you go. I don't want to know. And we're going to go into, let's say, the final set of 10. Okay, so for example, here, this is number 20. You step, this is positionally the fifth change. Okay. And then you grip rightward, leftward, back to the center, up, that's 23. You're gonna raise your left, lower your right, and 24. 25 is the beginning of the fire water changes. Okay, pointed in, or the long end, if I'm holding something without a, a point, okay? Take from the top, step back. That's the first of the fire water changes. Left, right, just a turn. Now we got the tip out there. It's going to go full 360 and thumb face. So I'm going to take it. Then I'm going to release and catch. I'm going to do a full sweep before I step, turn, cut. Then I'm going to go this way. Thumb space, thumb space away, thumb space 
Okay, so that's our fourth change. Now, the fire water changes. Fire water changes. What I call the two handed figure eight motion. Two handed figure eight motion. Now we can go this way, this way, this way, or we go this way, this way, this way. And then we can do the fire water changes and go back to, I did the third change. I'm boom, 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 boom. Okay. And so, you know, that's, that's basically what I do. Now we're gonna, so if you know the, uh, okay, in other words, uh, the, the 30 movements is kind of like a secret code. This is the first 10, you learn about the body changes, the first change. Second set of 10, uh, changes two, three, four, okay? Third set, you do the fifth change, and then you get the double figure eight, and you, you've got all you kind of need to do. Say the, the point is, I, yeah, I'm, I'm sure, you know, I could blow, you know, I want you to play it in this key. <laughs> but, you know, if, if change is there, you know what note to start on. Usually I don't start on beat one. And you've got three beats and mostly four, four to resolve it. And then this, and then this, and this linked up. So, you know, Art said, oh, now you're playing like chat, you know, I mean, my level, not, not at that all time grade level. Because he didn't follow the chords. He played around and through the structure of the piece. You could change the key on him, and he wouldn't say, oh, I don't know it in that key. He would just okay, blend, create, create, blend. Okay, and we're about to end, so, uh, but I kind of wanted to do. Okay, so you have a basic primer. That's your 30 movements. You may begin to kind of research past that. Einstein didn't stay with Newton. Created his own physics. And even Einstein had trouble with quantum. Okay? God does not play dice with the universe. Well, he may play Dungeons and Dragons. It's a really funny thing right there. But for example, here and here. Here, 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 here. Now, that's what I consider the gymnasium. What is the gymnasium for me? But Bruce Lee said, I don't move, it moves. I don't hit, it hits. It moves. I'm trying to research it, study that. Yeah, it starts that way. I research it, I begin to somewhat feel it. I'm kind of standing kind of at ground zero, and then all of a sudden, fire water changes. So for me, that's the gymnasium. It's not a study out there. <sighs> and it's not just learning to muscle the third. And it's not staying purely just within the, what I would call the, uh, the research area. Research is important. I put a lot of time into research, okay? So that's about it. Uh, before we break, um, anything you might want to add? Um, anybody? Cliff? Um, just in general, noticing that my, you know, my movement gets freer the more I do it. Yeah. That's it. You know. Yeah. It's kind of like a trumpet teacher. I really like it when he played. I thought it was really good. But it's almost like... I don't want to learn the chords because for me, yeah, there's that the template of something like 30 movements. You know, it stands, it turns, it settles. 
And I kind of want to be that transparency, which is a very live experience where you're, you know, uh, in some sense, you know, the way you sleep, but it, I don't get it is. Okay? Or for us, I don't blend, it blends. This means uh, there's something called a spirit that's very free. Um, or since he might say something like, I don't do it, the universe does it. You see what I mean? In other words, it's a field of energy, and it to some degree contains all the knowledge, the beginnings of a, an understanding that's, that's not just purely mental, and has the gymnasium in it. And I just kind of want to be that transparency right there that allows a spirit moves, therefore I move with it. And if there's, there, you know, I mean, somebody says, well, why don't you do this and that? Yeah, okay, I could. But these are movements that, uh, you know, LeBron James has a bunch of moves. Uh, and, and does Curry do them? Yeah, but you know, they're, they're different. And there's a bunch of stuff Curry does that LeBron can't do, and vice versa. In other words, you are your own collective body of experiences and you know for you it'll be uniquely you so you know what we try to do a little bit take 30 movements go from the library somewhat into the laboratory which is important you research it you try spins and you know and then you know you add the fire water changes you're still kind of in the laboratory and for me i just try to explain as best I could the, uh, it's not a gymnasium, but it's kind of when you're kind of present enough, your mind, body are unified enough and open enough. I'm going to do the it moves, it sits, it's conscious. You know, I try, yeah, I play, play around with that, respectfully. You know, because I feel, what she thought was an old man doing all this magical stuff. All right, so obviously, you know, he had a type of knowledge that he researched pretty deeply. It was deeply experiential to him, that connection with, let's say, the universe or spirit or key or this was what was coming. So uh, we will be in Mountain View on Sunday for an in-person class. I thank you for tuning in. Okay. So we'll see you hopefully. Thank you. And I'm going to stop the recording unless Elle stops it. Thank you, Sensei. Yeah, take care. Okay, we're going see you to Sunday. Recording stop.